Welcome back to HodgePodge on this Tuesday, July 11th. July 11th. How about July 14th? Joel Kepke with you here on this Tuesday morning. And, of course, it's Tuesday. That means we talk Becker County Energize. And Guy Fisher from the Becker County EDA, also the Parks and Rec Coordinator, joins us, as does Carrie Johnson from the DL Chamber. Guy and Carrie, good morning. Welcome to HodgePodge. Good morning. Good morning. Let's talk about uh, what Becker County Energize means to you and why it's important. Carrie? You know, I love this concept when we learned about what other communities were doing and this brought an opportunity for our community to really focus on the wellness of the community and overall wellness, not only just what we traditionally think of as health, but a healthy community means a lot of things, including housing. And that's something that uh, I've been excited to be able to be a part of. Guy? Yeah, I, I mean, uh, I was really pleased when Essentia kind of stepped into the role of kind of an anchor institution in this community and developed a process where we could kind of look at needs and issues, um, you know, and, and take a holistic approach. Uh, food access, uh, child care, uh, housing, uh, I mean, uh, exercise and, and infrastructure associated with that. There's a lot of different things that they've plugged into uh, relative to this community, and that's been, that's been great uh, for, for everyone. One of the things we want to talk about this morning is a Home to Me Low Income Housing Project. How have you seen success through Becker County Energize with this program? You know, this has been a, a pilot program. We, we actually took a framework um, that was tried here before, didn't quite get legs. We tweaked it a little bit through conversation and re-energized it, but also brought it um, through a lot of conversation of other opportunities too throughout the community. So the home project was not just something we... We plugged in, it took a lot of planning, a lot of work, a lot of partners to really get it to launch. And it's been uh, a great success. What it does is help people with their down payment assistance as you're trying to buy, purchase a home. Uh, maybe you just need that little bit of extra financing and the community has rallied together to be able to help our citizens buy their, their home. Gary, how long is a home to me, the low income housing, how long has this program been going on? Oh, I forget because we did it so much in planning, but I think we're about a year and a half um, and it went a full year. Of course, it's a rotational and, and a revolving fund and we hope to keep this ball rolling. Gary, uh, speaking of the funds, where does the funding for this program come from? You know, it's coming from lots of variety, from city, county, um, variety of cities, but also from private industries. Uh, some of our larger employers have been able to help us out and, and pool together money so that we can help the citizens. Are there, uh, obviously, uh, this low-income housing project, uh, Home to Me, are there some guidelines that people need to be aware of to be eligible for the program? Yeah, this is income-based, and um, it really depends on the size of your household and your income, so there's a little bit of a sliding scale, but great opportunity to, again, find that financing, maybe that you're struggling just to, to need that little bit of extra to get you going. Guy, anything you want to chime in on uh, here on this topic? Well, you know, I mean, it's a 0% it's a interest uh, on the loan. And uh, the payments are deferred until the sale of the home. Uh, those are pretty important components. But when we've had this out there, people have snapped it up. So it does fill a gap. And we've sought to do other, uh, you know, to do other programs. I'm talking in, in particular with the county uh, that, that attempt to fill that gap. I mean, if you, if you compare home ownership with, um, uh, with renting, um, there was a there was a study that was done that over the course of 20 to 30 years for those that rent uh, may be on the plus side be in terms of savings by about five thousand dollars but if you own a home um, after 20 or 30 years you've got you've got some capital you've got two hundred fifty thousand dollars to work with and um, so it's that security it's that community security it's uh, it's people vested in their communities. I mean, it's all these important things that kind of come together and are, you know, and the home program kind of tried to, uh, to work with that, you know, and to, and to improve that, the circumstances uh, in our community. When we talk about home ownership, uh, one of those elements in people's lives, and yeah, when you're young or you're not quite sure where you want to go and you rent and you lease, and then you get to that age, maybe you have kids, you start your family, get married. And you want a home base. You want some place to call your own. And home ownership, especially for families uh, with kids, uh, let's talk about the importance of those kids and those families having a place to call their own. Yeah, I mean, you can see it in a community. When you start to see those rental rates uh, percentage in a community go too high, 
you just don't quite have that same community spirit and pride in the community. So when you're going to have home ownership and pride in home ownership, you know, you're mowing your front lawn a little bit more, you're planting the flowers, you're really taking care, but you also have that solid ground, that stability. And as an employer, you have employees who are staying. They're vested in the community. They're here. They're active. Um, they know their neighbors and hopefully taking care of their neighbors. So I think home ownership really does affect the community as a whole. Now, during the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, things have changed. Uh, kids' lives have changed. Adults' lives have changed. Of course, my lives have changed. But being able to come home at the end of the day, whether you are working from home or working out in the general public, it's nice to be able to come home and have that place to call your own. Yeah. Most definitely. Yeah. And I think home is more than just even the four square walls. It's that backyard and being able to enjoy what you've got, a little chunk of land or, you know, even if it's a slice of the driveway, it's, it's something to, to call your own and take care of. And like I said, sit back, relax and enjoy what you've got. Guy, did you want to add something? No, I think that's uh, well said. <laughs> uh, before I let you folks go, is there anything else you'd like to get out to the public as far as information or uh, how people can take advantage of this home to me, low income housing project? Yeah, we've partnered with MMCDC. So if you're interested, want some more information, um, they've got great partner um, programs along with this with their neighbor works and others to try to help with some home ownership. Um, so you can call MMCDC for more information, check out their website, but you can also work with your local lender. So if you've got somebody that, you know, a local banker that you're trust and you're working with uh, as you're trying to go through the home uh, ownership process, talk to your lender. They know all about this program and hopefully you can tap into some of those funds that are out there. Guy, before we let you go, anything uh, you want to add? Uh, no, there's, uh, well, there, there's, there's another program out there too, in, in, in addition to the home program, but, uh, but there, there, we're trying to create more opportunities for home ownership in this community and, and in the county. And, and uh, so, so definitely, uh, if you're looking to purchase a home, uh, go ahead and uh, give MMCDC a call and see what's available. Sounds good. Guy Fisher, Carrie Johnson, thanks for being with us this morning on HodgePodge with our Becker County Energy. You guys have a great day.